What's up guys, it's your favorite QB coach and welcome to my swing analysis of Rio Ishikawa. It's what you should expect from this analysis. We're gonna go over why he's such a good player, like what is he doing good with his golf swing, as well as why we haven't heard too much about him lately. Possibly could be because he's trying to gain a couple extra yards. Maybe he went wrong with a few things doing that. So anyways guys, let's get into this analysis right now. So the first thing we're gonna look for is down the line view. So we're gonna look at the left part of our screen right here. Cool. So we're gonna go a little bit over setup because I always like to start with that with players just because I think, especially when you're looking at professional golf swings, they usually have very good setup. So it's great to kind of look at what they're doing correct. And it's a great take home point for you guys to kind of understand. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go look at his knee flex at address, okay? So we're gonna go run one up real quick and check out where he is around. Cool. So he's right around here. So he's over at 154, right? So I would guess he's hitting anywhere from about a gap wedge to about a pitching wedge nine iron possibly here. So 154 is a pretty good range. So what you're typically gonna look for is your shorter irons, you're probably gonna have more knee flex than maybe your driver, right? Longer club, less knee flex, standing a little bit taller. With the driver, wedges, shorter club, a little bit more knee flex, standing a little bit shorter, right? Kind of makes a little bit of sense. So he's doing a really good job there. Now the next thing I like to point out is if we zoom in on the back line again, notice how it's nice and flat, this lumbar spine at this point, right? So typically the spine has a nice little curvature, they call that lordosis of the spine. At setup, I ideally like to see that curvature maybe a little bit less and that pelvis almost, or you can feel about it as the butt, almost a little bit more underneath you. And that basically gets the pelvis line a little bit more level as opposed to maybe tilting down too much. Now the reason why we like that is we found that players who set up in that position naturally in the backswing start going into that lordosis and getting that lumbar shearing, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, which basically just allows them to rotate a little bit better in the backswing as well as on the downswing. We found players who set up with that S posture or with that lordosis already preset, the pivots tend to go out of it and they don't rotate as much. Same thing kind of on the downswing, if their pivots are fine, they also go out of it and maybe get a little bit stalled out, right? So I like what Rio Ishikawa is currently doing with his setup in those regards. He's doing a great job. So those are definitely take home points that you guys should do. Now, next thing we're gonna look for is basically where his pressure is, right? So we're gonna draw a line from the balls of feet, kneecaps, and armpits, okay? So the first thing we're gonna notice is if we draw these circles, we can see that his armpits are a little bit in front of this line, right? So if I erase this last circle and we draw a line and kind of take a look and zoom in here, notice how his armpits currently are a little bit in front of that line. So what that's telling me is that he might have a little bit too much pressure out towards the toes. Now, this is kind of common for the traditional look because a lot of people model their swings after Adam Scott, a little bit of Tiger Woods. Now, the funny thing with Adam Scott, back in the day, he used to line everything up off the hosel. And then what he would do is, on the back swing, he would back away from his ever so subtly and then kind of just stay there and sit on the wall, which totally worked out. It was a matchup, right? So let's see if Rio's matching that up later in the swing. Obviously, we're gonna look at it. Let's let's get through this setup a little bit more, guys. But anyways, um, that is something that we're gonna take note of for the future. Last thing we're gonna take note of is basically we're gonna draw a line from the middle of the hand straight down. I like to see with wedges who like kind of right around like a seven iron, six iron, that is pretty much on the toe line, right? Once you get a little bit more like a five iron, four iron, to kind of hybrid driver, it can be slightly out of off the toe line. Driver, you're probably gonna be right around like two inches off the toe line, maybe a subtle bit more or a subtle bit less, right? But anyways, um, everything about Rio's setup currently right now is very very good except for those pressure points and that's going to definitely come to play here pretty soon. Cool so as we take him up to the end of the takeaway we're going to call this position two we can see that he's got a very very traditional takeaway right so let's take a look so notice his arm structure right here then let's see that the club head is splitting the middle of it that's a very traditionalist takeaway right that means he had the correct amount of pronation the correct amount of right wrist extension the correct amount of radial hinge or upward hinge to get him into that great spot. So this is definitely a take home point I would tell you guys to take a look at. Next thing we're gonna look at in this takeaway position is the axis of his shoulders, because I think this is super important for a lot of you guys. So notice how he's over at 53 degrees. A lot of you guys in this position have a very flat shoulder axis, which means you almost just turn like this instead of adding in a little bit of angle to it or a little bit of tilt to it. And that's what Rio does very good, which also helps him keep the club head more out in front of him and keep him a little bit more on plane. So in terms of the takeaway, great job. 
Now the last thing I want to talk about in this takeaway section is the sequencing of his body, right? So what I like to see is right around the takeaway position or end of it, I like to see the hips have moved right around like 15 degrees and the shoulders are right around 30 degrees opening to or um, basically just rotating backwards right in the backswing. That's a pretty traditionalist model. Uh, you can mess around with those numbers and totally be fine, but that's just something if you want to um, have a good model, a good basis to work off of, that's a great place to start, right? So he's doing a really good job in this backswing. Now left arm parallel position, let's take a look at club shaft pitch. Notice how he's pointing halfway in between the golf ball and the toe line. I love that personally for the full swing. It gets into kind of the throwing motion and I think it just really helps the player want to get this elbow into external rotation on the way down right because if you're gonna throw something let's say you're skipping a rock your elbow works out this way and then it works back in this way right it's the throwing motion golf swing I believe and a lot more instructors are starting to believe too that this is a great idea to incorporate into the golf swing and whenever you get that club shaft pitch more so this way instead of this way you're starting to get into that throwing motion and you're giving yourself a great chance to get that elbow move very good on the way down which is crucial so I'm glad that he's doing that um, sequence of rotation looks good here. The only thing that I'm seeing right here is it does look like he's kind of leaning a little bit too far close into the golf ball, which is what we saw at setup, remember? Remember how he was a little bit too much on his toes at setup? So we can start to see that right now in the golf swing. Top of the swing, he's in a great position here. Um, let's take a look at some things. Notice how his lead arm is basically on the shoulder line or even slightly above it. I'm a big fan of having it on or slightly above. Uh, let's look, take a look at this trail side bicep. Notice how it's parallel to the ground. I love that right there. Now this forearm right here in the trail side is not quite parallel to the spine, but again, the main reason because of that is because I think he has too much pressure on the toes and he's made a backswing where he's get on, gone, and maybe even increased that a little bit. So that could be kind of the reason why those two don't match up. But all in all, Everything about Rio's backswing and top of the swing position is it's really good. I mean, he's a little bit off in places here and there, but it's its really good. All right, guys, so that was the end of part one. We're going to have three parts of this video. It's right around a 22-minute video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We talked a lot about the backswing of Rio, why he has such a good backswing. This is going to be probably one of the most important parts of the video in terms of you guys taking home. Great visual for you guys. Rio does a lot of great things. He might have more so of a Tiger 2000 pivot, but again, not a big deal. We love what he's doing going on. Look forward to part two where we really start diving into why he has not been playing very good golf lately. If you haven't already, feel free to smash that like button, leave me a comment, let me know if you guys like this type of video or what you guys want to see here in the future. And as always, subscribe. Alright guys, have a good one and see you guys soon.